So let's understand the concept of profit and loss in business because the profit and loss is usually estimated in the business process. Most of them, though not directly but indirectly do the business and that is where the profit and loss comes. So in a business we can expect either a profit or a loss. Profit in general means, means that the amount of money you are investing and the amount of money which you are getting is more than the investment you make is profit. Let's come with a simple real life example where I went to the shop and I brought this diary for 40 rupees. That means I brought this for 40 rupees implies the cost of the book or the cost of the diary is 40 rupees. So my cost price here is 40 rupees where one of my friends saw this diary and he said it's so good why don't you give me I'll pay you the money. So I just wanted to sell this book to him for more money. I brought this book for 40 rupees from the shop but because my friend liked it I wanted to cheat him by just putting in more money. So the book what the same book which I sold was for 50 rupees. Then in this case this was rupees 40 and this was rupees 50 and then in this case smartly I could make a profit of rupees 10. As can be clearly seen there is a profit of rupees 10 because I got this 10 rupees as profit because I simply take selling price minus cost price. So I understand profit as selling price minus cost price which is the formula for finding profit for any real life problem to find profit I use the formula selling price minus cost price. So the book I brought for 40 rupees I sold it for 50 rupees I made a profit. Now let's come to the similar example of a book. Now in case of this I have taken the cost price of the book as 40 rupees because the same book I brought it for 40 rupees but another friend of mine who is not uh, he was a very good friend of mine who has helped me in the past so he was a very good friend where he helped me in the past so in that case I wanted to help him too equally by selling this book for a lesser rate. I didn't want to cheat him but because he's my best friend I wanted to sell him for less rate. So in this case I sold the book for rupees 30. So though I brought it for 40 rupees I sold it for 30 rupees because I simply like him because he has helped me in the past. So in this case my cost price is 40 rupees but because I sold this book for 30 my selling price is 30 rupees. So in case of this I'm at a loss of 10 rupees because I brought the book for 40 but I'm giving him for 30. So I'm at a loss of the 10 rupees which I'm missing from my pocket. So here I identify that in case of this I get a loss which I got by subtracting 40 minus 30. So what is the difference between this and this is the biggest question. So here I got this 10 by subtracting 50 minus 40 which gave me 50 as selling price and 40 as cost price. Therefore profit is selling price minus cost price. But when I take the loss I get this by taking 40 minus 30, 30 where the loss is 10. But when I take the formula for this I understand that loss is 40 which is cost price in general minus 30 which is selling price in general. Therefore my loss is CP minus SP and my profit is SP minus CP is how I understand the difference between the profit and loss in a real life problem. So in this case selling price will always be greater than cost price. In this case cost price will always be greater than selling price. So therefore in case of this said if selling price is always greater than cost price we get a profit. If the cost price is always greater than selling price we get a loss. And if the selling price and cost price are equal then I neither get a loss nor a profit. I am neutral. So if selling price is equal to cost price then there is no loss or profit. That means if I buy this book for 40 rupees and sell the book for same 40 rupees I am neither at a loss nor a profit. But in case of my friend who is not that good friend I get a profit of 10 rupees because I am smart enough to sell it for 10 rupees more than what I brought it for. 
but in case of a friend who is very close of mine and then in that case i am very humble to him and then in humankind i sell it for 10 rupees less therefore i am at a loss of 10 rupees in case of this i sacrifice my friendship for him but not for him but for him therefore by finding the profit and loss i can also find the profit percent and the loss percent by using these two formula so if i wanted to calculate the profit percent i made in case of this example problem of selling a book for 40 rupees 50 rupees when i brought it for 40 rupees then my profit percent is calculated by multiplying profit with 100 by cost price and my loss percent is equally calculated in case of my second case my best friend's case where the cost price was 40 and selling price is 30 then the loss i get as rupees 10 i substitute here the cp and the loss and then i get the loss percent and profit percent respectively by substituting the respective formula out there is how i understand the profit percent and loss percent calculated on profit and loss now interestingly we see that <coughs> in both the cases of profit percent and the loss percent i have cost price but not the selling price because the profit or loss is calculated on the cost of the product is very important note which you're going to take so as i observe here the profit is calculated on cp and the loss is calculated on cp i understand that profit percent or loss percent are both calculated on cost price of the product but not the selling price the cost of the product is very important or which takes into account when you cal calculate the profit percent or the loss percent so interest or simple interest is mostly calculated in the money we just deposit in the bank say for example i deposit 10000 rupees in the bank and say i'm calculating the interest of the amount which is deposited in the bank which increases annually if there's a uniform increase of interest or the additional amount which is being added up to this if that is uniform then we call that interest as simple interest if every year if that is not uniform then that will be called compound interest which we are going to see in the next session so in case of this the uniform increase of interest which is called simple interest is given by the formula si denoted for simple interest as prt by 100 is the formula i have for calculating simple interest and then here p is called principal amount or principal is the amount which we deposit or we the initial amount the principal is called initial amount in general terms and r is called the rate of interest which we calculate for the given problem and t is the time period calculated per annum this is generally calculated per annum so this is rate of interest per annum and this is the time period which is generally calculated in years so i take the year time period in years and rate of interest which is calculated for every year and the principal amount is the initial amount which we deposit in the bank or we take as a loan so there are many real life situations where the initial amount comes into existence when we borrow the money from someone or when we deposit the money in the bank etc so this is how i understand the simple interest given by the formula prt by 100 say for example and next let's also take one of the formula which says that amount minus principal is simple interest so i also have the formula where a is the amount and si is the simple interest and this amount is nothing but the final amount so for example if i put 10000 rupees in 2014 that the amount i'm drawing from the bank in 2021 or 2020 after six years or seven years is what is called final amount or amount denoted with a so i call this as final amount which is connected with the principal amount so if i subtract the principal amount the amount i deposited and the total amount when they are subtracted from each other i get the interest the difference is nothing but the interest or the simple interest because 
uniform increase of interest is taken into account. So therefore, this simple interest is amount minus principal and SI is PRT by 100 are the two basic formulae which we use in solving the problems. So let's see an example problem connected to real life and involving simple interest, amount, principal, rate and time period. So in case of this, a sum of money 2500 rupees is borrowed at 12% rate per annum for three years. So clearly I understand that the initial amount which is borrowed from the lender is rupees 2500. Therefore, the initial amount is nothing but the principal which is denoted with P. Therefore, my principal is rupees 2500 as given as in the values of the problem. Now my rate is 12% per annum. So rate being R is 12% per annum and my time period is for 3 years. Therefore, T is 3 in years which I take on the whole. Then when I do this, I clearly know that my simple interest is PRT by 100. Therefore, using the formula PRT by 100, which is derived from the formula here, I get P is equal to 2500 into R into T by 100. So this on subtraction gives 12, 25, 3 is 75 times 12 on multiplication. Eighty-four ninety. So this gives me nine hundred rupees. So this is the interest amount I pay on the whole for three years. So when my simple interest is rupees nine hundred, then my amount, the simple interest is rupees nine hundred, which I obtained in case of the first case. But the question is also about finding the total amount paid at the end of three years, which is nothing but the final amount denoted with a, and a is given by simple interest plus principal because minus p comes to the right as plus p therefore a is si plus p so therefore my amount is simple interest plus p which on simplification gives simple interest plus the principal amount 2500 which gives me 3400 rupees is my total amount which i am going to pay by the end of three years the borrowed money is 2500 rupees and the amount by the end of three years which i am going to pay is 3400 years rupees in addition being that 900 rupees is paid more to the money borrowed and the money lent coming out to be 3400 rupees is the amount is how i understand the simple interest and amount connected with principal rate and time so now next is the other type of interest which is compound interest so what is the difference between simple interest and compound interest now simple interest as we have seen in the previous session is about uniform increase of money which is borrowed. So when the interest is uniformly increasing every year we get simple interest but sometimes the interest may not be uniform because the first year interest might be less the next year it increases because this interest amount is also added then that starts fluctuating increasing by multiples of n. So with this increase in multiples the compound interest is also understood in mathematics in its own means. So compound interest has non-uniform increase of interest amount. Okay. Now where present interest is multiplied with previous interest of the previous year and so on. So this continuous process makes us get the compound interest. Therefore, let's see what's the formula for compound interest. Now, principal rate and time are as similar as we have discussed for simple interest. So let's skip that so that we use the compound interest formula as directly with p into 1 plus r by 100 whole power t. Now in this case, the only difference being that p is the principal, rate is the rate of interest and t is the time period which may not be in years, sometimes it changes. Now. This is the formula for amount in case of compound interest. If the interest is calculated for compoundedly, 
or compound interest, then amount is given as P into 1 plus R by 100 whole part T, where T is the time period, R is rate of interest per annum, and P is the principal, and A is the final amount, P is the initial amount. So the final amount which we are going to get or lend or borrow or deposit is going to be calculated using the formula thus, where the compound interest is as usual given by amount minus principal. So these are the two basic formulae which help us in for formulating and finding the values of amount and compound interest using the two basic formulae. So sometimes the time period is also referred as N because it is easy for understanding that the compound interest is calculated for the first N years or until N years. So I can also replace this with P into 1 plus R by 100 raised to N whole power N and that is what is the amount formula and this would be amount minus principal. So this is how we understand this and here rate of interest is R per annum and here the compound interest which is very important here or the amount are compounded annually. So interestingly what happens is the rate of interest is calculated for every year and this is compounded annually therefore there is no difference you make when you substitute here but sometimes there are some problems where I ask find the rate of interest which is compounded semi-annually or quarterly. Therefore now if I wanted to calculate the compound interest semi-annually or half yearly then in that case the only difference is that the rate which was calculated per annum is now calculated with R by 2 percent which we are going to use in compound interest. So when the question is about half yearly, the question says compounded half yearly or semi-annually, the only change we are going to make is convert the rate of interest which is given into half of so that I get the, the original half rate of which is nothing but the actual R. Let me take this as R1 and this will be the original R. So the rate of interest which is R1 is calculated by 2 so that I get the original R which is substituted here. Is how I understand the concept of rate of interest. Same way if I have quarterly then similarly if I say quarterly then this reduces to by 4 because 4 quarters make 1 year and 2, two half yearlies make 1 full year. And if suppose if I calculate per month then 12 months make 1 year. So this rate I divide with 12 if I am compounding this monthly. If the question is compounding monthly then I divide 12 to the rate of interest as given in the problem and then I get the original R which I need to substitute here. So this is how I understand compounding annually, compounding half yearly, compounding quarterly, compounding per month. So compounding annually I get R, so compounding semi annually or half yearly. I get R by 2 that is divide the rate with 2 and substitute here and compounding quarterly I divide with 4 to the given rate of interest and substitute here and then I get the answer accordingly. So in case of this example problem let's find the compound interest and the amount. So in case of this calculate compound interest on rupees 1000 being the initial amount my P is rupees 1000 and over a period of one year so my n is one year but before that because the rate is calculated for per annum as 40 percent per annum which I take it as R1 then in this case my compound interest is compounded quarterly as I see here because it's compounded quarterly my rate would reduce by one fourth therefore for quarterly I get the rate as one fourth of this because every four quarters make one year therefore I take one by four of R1 which is 40 percent therefore my rate is 10 percent. So this is my rate which I am calculating for the interest compounded quarterly. So next my N which is calculated for one year is this but when I calculate for quarterly I divide into four times therefore my N would also be four because I am taking the time interval of four times in a year because one year is divided into four quarters I get n equal to four though it is calculated for a period of one year every three months I get four times which calculates to one year. So using this I get 
amount with the formula p into 1 plus r by 100 whole power n which on substitution gives me the principal amount as 1000 into 1 plus r by 100 whole power 4 so that this on simplification gives me 10 plus 1 11 by 10 whole power 4 so 11 power 4 by 10 on simplification gives me the value of the given problem.